It's just hilarious. Oh, we're live. Fine. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're unplugged. <laughs> so Mel and I were just sitting here chatting and we thought it would be fun to hop on because uh, we started doing these about a week ago uh, or two weeks ago and we were doing them regularly. And then last week we were both like, well, we totally forgot to do that live. So anyway, we were just laughing about um, just literally about business and um, today on the Lunch and Learn, for those of you that made it, it was so much fun. We, we really wow. had a good time. But we talked about, uh, Carrie Connolly brought up bringing people back to their why. Like, I love it. She said, I love it, Colleen, because you bring people back to their why. And, you know, if we're going to be unplugged about this, your passion and things that you want to do, like my passion is lead up for women and bring this community together. But I can't do it by myself, right? And right. if I, I brought up the question today, what are you best known for? But where you know, and where do you make where do you make your money? So what I'm best known for is leading lead up for women in the community. That's how people see me. They see my banner and networking events, and that's what they see me. But that's not where I make my money. And I think that would surprise a lot of people. Yeah, because I don't make my money from the community at all, and. Um, and so I do it because I love bringing women forward. I love celebrating them. I love putting them on platforms. And that's why Mel became part of Lead Up and wanted to join yeah. this organization is because we truly believe in supporting other people first and being in the give. Yeah, I, I mean, I was talking to one of the ladies the lead in the Lead Up breakout, breakout rooms about, you know, why we're so awesome how you know what is our our magic and she was like i just don't know i like she literally could not tell us what she was good at like and we're like i was like well what do you like like what lights you on fire because it's surprising how a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. and um you know and then she you know just had all of these things to talk about and just, we are not asked that enough. And I yeah. think it's easy for us to forget like why we're here, like, yeah. you know, what we, yeah. what we get excited about. That's why it's so easy for me to really um, deploy my days and, and just get in the moment with what I'm doing with Lead Up and not even realize how much loyalty or time I put into it because it just lights me up. You know, it's not until a child is like, oh, my gosh, you work so many hours, mom. This is ridiculous. And I'm like, it doesn't feel like it, but I guess I do. I don't know. Um, you know, but we all have our passions of what we do. And it's OK to make your money somewhere else and have a passion. But something Mel and I were just talking about is once you figure out what it is that lights you up, you should be making money from that. And you need to pay yeah. attention to what the market's calling for, right? So supply and demand, that's something we haven't talked about ever, which is you have to look to ensure that you have a solution for someone's problem. And even though here we think there's a problem and I'm to the rescue, I'm going to solve the problem, maybe it's not what people yeah. are looking for. So I think there becomes a reevaluation time where you look at that and go, is this still what people want? Is it providing them the value they need? Or do we need to pivot? And I hate that word, but essentially it's what you're doing. Do yeah. I need to close a path or two? Because we used to have these lead up lightning rounds that we did and it was awesome for a couple of months and no one showed up anymore. And I was marketing them the same, doing everything the same. And it's like, well, they don't see value in it. So now's not the right time to roll it out. So that's why we're adding things in lead up, taking things away from lead up, changing things in lead up. You know, with with COVID, it was like, no, the printing places were really funny about printing the magazines and sending them out because everyone took them out of their waiting rooms. And it's like, well, we don't ship magazines now. And so all these things changed with the pandemic and things that happen. And that's not the only outside environmental thing that happens that we need to pay attention to. We have to pay attention to trends and we have to pay attention mm -hmm. to the needs of people. If we're going to more technology, would it make sense to be in, in, the, in the business where you're creating and making home telephones with long cords? No, that business is not a good business to be in right now. But back in 1970 and 1980, yeah, that was a yeah. killer business. 
but not with the technology we have today. So we just, you know, need to be always checking ourselves and reevaluating our business plan to the demand of what's out. Yeah. And always, like you said, that's just the biggest, biggest takeaway because you said that pivot, we, we don't like it, but it's always changing how we thought last year was going to be like that. Just one major change of the craziness. And then we all had to change to this direction. It would be that way for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's going back and, you know, it's going all over the board, always yeah. changing. And, you know, from our conversation today, you had me realize that, yeah, like, I'm not just okay doing what I've been doing for the past six months, which has been great. I may need to make a few revisions and uh, create new pathways. Yeah. And I think that's smart for us to always be reevaluating yeah. our businesses. So that's a pretty unplugged conversation today, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I went to a virtual event last weekend or the one day uh -huh. I could go. It was an awesome virtual event. And during that virtual event, these are Barry and Blue run Sage. They're the company that now works with Tony Robbins and so many other big people, but they didn't before then. So I just want to bring this up. They didn't before then. And they were at an event in March. They were at the event when the president shut down the country. They literally flew home. There were 10 people on the plane. Every single one of their people that they had booked from that day all the way forward canceled. Their business went from flourishing to zero in one day. So yeah. did anyone doing weddings. So did anyone doing event, every event planner out there. Danella Burnett, mm -hmm. same thing. So the interesting part about that that I wanted to mention was they were like, how could we do this differently? Why couldn't we do this event online and make it like a live event and do everything the same exact thing you do in person? How do we trans transcend that to the live, you know, virtual world? And that's mm -hmm. what they did. And then when people heard about it, like Dean Gracio and stuff, they were like, Tony's on his way to get in his plane. He's coming to see you to check you out. And Tony was like, there's no way you can help me fill an audience that I used to fill before. Like he's filling like 45,000 more people now because they don't have to all fit in an auditorium. Huh. So it just goes to show when Great you job. thought home was already so great it can get even better. And the virtual thing that we do now is so much better. Like, look at all the networking events we get to go to. Look at all the people we get to connect with out in the, you know, Lead Up for Women was yeah. national till the pandemic and now we're global. You know, we weren't even global before that. There are so many networking events like Heather Roush and Foxy Women where they were only local in Phoenix, virtual and the pandemic had brought them mm -hmm. into global. So we can now connect with other people in other countries and we can be in five different places at the same time and not have to drive there. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> that is so good. Like your, what, your uh, webinar in India? You yeah. Were at 10 oh, yeah, 1030 at, at night. 1030 at night. It was there 8 o'clock in the morning. They were all having coffee, waking up. And I literally at 1030 at night, I'm like doing a, you know, doing a speaking, keynote speaking with them. It was so much fun for like a Toastmasters thing. I loved it. Um, and I got to meet so many people who do similar things and have similar passions of what we are and love family. And that's just, you know, it warms my heart to see how the pandemic has actually brought the world closer in some ways yeah. versus segregating us, which is what we thought was going to happen. And yes, do I feel alone in my house a lot? And yes, do I beg for my girlfriends to go out to dinner <laughs> or do anything with me just to hang out? I won't tell you that Mel canceled on me tonight. But we just try to yeah. do every, every chance we get, right, to connect with other people in person because I do miss that part of it. But there's so much for us to be thankful for. So just always be reevaluating re your businesses and how things are going. So, yeah. In Lead Up for Women, you're going to see things change. You know, we're doing a membership drive starting on President's Day. So that's going to be a great opportunity for women to invite other women in to Lead Up for Women. We want to start chapters. We may be taking away some of the things we do today and changing them to look a little bit different like we did the magazine. But that's okay because you still get the value of connecting with the women, networking with the women, being in the community. It's so worth, the you know, them being here for what they get. Yeah. Yeah. And the connections yeah. alone. And it was pretty powerful. And at the end of the lunch and learn, 
one of the ladies, you know, was just shared her excitement for, you know, seeing some friendly faces and also people that she hasn't seen in a while, reconnecting with them and meeting new people. And it was, like you said, it's just like such a great um, community that we have now that we can look forward to. Yeah. I love seeing you virtually and all of the other women is just like, hi, you know, it's like I haven't seen you since last week. <laughs> yeah. And I probably wouldn't see you this much if we didn't have this virtual platform, because it would just be yeah. based on when I could drive to your house, when you could drive to my house, when we could go yeah. to a temporary office or meet at Starbucks or whatever we would have to. And that takes a lot of our time to drive and plan and get there and block our day out. So I'm very grateful that and I wrote it in my in my uh, journal this morning. How grateful uh, I am for technology that has provided us this virtual world to connect with so many people and still feel their energy and still be like in the room with them. It's pretty cool. It's really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I love definitely. it. Definitely, we get to be a part yeah. of each other's lives virtually. I know it's great. Well, ladies, thanks for joining yeah. us today. Why Mel and I just sit here and have a conversation <laughs> with you. <laughs> if you have any questions about what we talked about, you can put them below. We'll, of course, answer them for you. Um, and you can reach out to Mel and I anytime at info at leadupforwomen.com. One of us will get back with you. It's just whoever yeah. gets to it first. So Come join the community. All right. We'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. Night. Thanks for being here. See ya. Bye.